Are you guys ready for a video for us to absolutely butcher every <laughs> single word? Because this is the type of video we're Wait, doing today. How is that any different to any other video we do? <laughs> Look, this one's going to be particularly bad. So today we're doing Slavic mythology creatures. I'm actually really interested in Slavic creatures. I, I recognize the words, but I have no clue on how to pronounce them ever. So uh, and I'm pretty sure most of you don't either. So yeah, don't that's a, come yeah, for me. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> like, you know, the thing, there's not many Slavaboos talking about. <laughs> well, there's more. There's getting more and more. But look, let's jump into this one. Uh, we haven't done like a good world building thread in a while, and uh, let's just do this. Slavic mythology creatures. In an effort to popularize my folklore. I'm going to talk at length about some cool Slavic mythological monsters that you could use for your world building. There's a dire dearth on accurate information on Slavic folklore in English, so this should come in handy for those of you who are keen to avoid cringe. We start with the creature that allows me to post the most, enticing OP pick. Of course, the one with the titties. A man of culture. The alchemist. Alconist. Yeah, I'm going with that. Alchemist. Yeah, we'll go with that. That's not too far off. It's a creature with the body of a bird of paradise and the torso of a human. So a harpy? Basically. A Slavic harpy? Yeah. They live in Ar, a mythical landmass in the sky where the birds migrate to in the winter. I've never thought about that actually before. Like what, where did people believe the birds went? Went in the winter. Before we knew where they, where actually, they actually go that's to. That's actually really interesting. Yeah. I, that's, that's something that I've never seen played about with. Yeah. That's actually a really good one. I like that. Where righteous souls go to after their deaths and where the spring arrives from. For all practical purposes, it's the Slavic heaven. Alchemists in particular live in or near the place of their divine patron's horse, the god of some. While male alchemists never leave ire, the females serve as the messengers of the gods, fulfilling the same basic role as angels. We know that male alchemists exist at all because sometimes they breed and lay eggs. They lay them into the sea shallows, which calms the sea for a week, which is the time it takes for the eggs to hatch. Once they do hatch, a mighty storm breaks out. Although alchemists are peaceful and mean no harm to humans, they can protect themselves in case some retard decides to capture one. As befitting of a bird, they attack with their song. The most basic song puts everyone who hears it to sleep. A more advanced song wipes the target's most recent memories clean. They adopt the men in black attitude when it comes to unwanted witnesses. Finally, their most powerful song, used only on complete scoundrels, can erase a person's intelligence and turn him into a vegetable. I like them. Ooh. Like, you know, it, it, to me, it does sound very much like harpies, but I've always found harpies to be kind of boring, not yeah. gonna lie. Yeah. I, it, it, there's something about birds. Maybe it's my unbridled hatred of seagulls, but I, I only. you my unbridled hatred of Zeech. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, Zeech too. But no, it's my. I, there's something about. I know, birds I, I, are boring, man. I, I like owls, and I like birds of prey, prey like falcons, yeah. eagles, stuff like that, but see pigeons but and seagulls. Yeah, honestly, I, I consider their value worthless. Yeah. I do not, I, there's something about, see like um, a pigeon, or particularly seagulls, man. Seagulls, I like ducks, though. Are, ducks are lovely. Yeah, I really like ducks. Yeah, seagulls are assholes. Yeah. I really like ducks, though. I love the video of the Englishman, like pure North RC, North FC, like punching that seagull because he stole his stole his sausage roll or something. <laughs> Next up, we have a far more wicked creature, the Aspid, a winged draconic monster with a bird's head. It lives high up in the mountain, but periodically raids the villages, kills the people with its highly toxic breath, and steals the livestock. There's a very good reason why it lives up so high. It can never land on soil. Its mere touch causes its pain. Instead, it lands only on bare rock. This doesn't sound too much worse than your regular dragon until you learn that aspids are completely invulnerable to physical damage. Weapons just do nothing to them. The only substance that can hurt them is fire. But setting a flying dragon on fire is exactly as difficult as it sounds. Thankfully, it has a very exploitable weakness. It's very delicate and sensitive hearing. Loud noises irritate Aspid, and trumpeting in particular sends it into a berserker rage. Heroes use trumpets to lure Aspids into their traps, and then restrain them and burn them to death, as depicted in this illustration. So I'm going to tell we you. Do not just have like massive like. Um, what are they called? Catapults? Yeah, see, that's... Full of soil? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. What? So, first of all, I would... Um, so, you got to use your trumpets to put it in the right direction. And you got to line up the trumpets some distance. Like, you're going to have to make it so it's far enough away from its nest mm -hmm. 
so you can keep it away from its nest yeah. and eventually it's going to get tired enough it's going to have to do something so then you keep launching your soil so, uh, up, and then eventually you just get a big net and, and then, then you bur- you, you know, get a blue torch to its feet the soil it, it's going to get sore and tired so it's going to land on the soil and then just set on fire yeah you, with a big net with a big net yeah yeah i don't know i don't think this is this doesn't seem like if you really want to i think deal, i could take one <laughs> just saying <laughs> i mean like a dragon nah but see this i think i could take it I, th- I think if we had a few catapults would be sweet now we come to the most ubiquitous evil spirit of the slavic lore the court or chort christianity or chode. can we call or it chode? Chode. Well, christianity co-opt them into its own terminology as low-ranking demons but chorts are older than Christianity. They're small humanoid creatures, they're chodes. Yeah, little dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> you can kick them in the face. <laughs> they're small humanoid creatures covered in wiry black bristle with clawed hands, hoofed legs, long tails with a tuft on the end, goat horns and pig snouts instead of faces. See, I really, yeah, see, I really wanted to... I really want to make one of these as like a lease for D&D. Yeah. I love... like. Med- middle aged Christian um, devils, you know the ones with like the faces on their ass yeah. and like the little tiny pitchforks yeah. and they're like kind of fluffy. Yeah, I, I I think one of these would be so much fun to play yeah, as. And they're like just, two foot tall. Yeah, like play like them as see him hide his ass. He's just yeah. not gonna make it. <laughs> <laughs> just like or like attack demons. Yeah. you know what I mean. I really I, there's something about see like we small dickhead creatures. I just love them. I know, and I can't like that's. I think this is what I've gotten for goblins. I just go like and fey. Yeah, well. and fey. I, like and that all that sort of yeah. stuff. But anyway, let's just keep going. Sometimes they even sport bat wings that allow them to fly. Chorts can be. F- what way am I saying this? Chorts or courts? Just call them chodes. Chodes. Chodes can be found anywhere, but most imp- commonly in swamps near crossroads and other godforsaken lonely places. They live to harm and torment humans. Although usually in minor ways, they hardly even kill or maim anyone. It's more fun for them to humiliate people, break up their families or ruin them financially. To this end, they're equipped with very potent shapeshift, which they use to turn either into small black animals to travel inconspicuous. That's why our cat's an asshole. <laughs> yeah, we've got a little black cat and uh, he's, an he, he, he's got the most, see his, see his meow, so we've got two cats. One of them's got the most pretty little meow you'll ever hear and the other one goes like, <laughs> not even joking, that's the exact noise that he makes. <laughs> A small, into small black animals to travel inconspicuously or into humans to trick random strangers. However, their shape shifting is not perfect. They always retain one significant detail of their original appearance, usually the tail, as it's trivial to hide, but it can also be hooves or horns. While in their human form, they are fond of seducing wives, having sex with them and fathering illegitimate children. A child born from a chort is bound to have congenital... Congen- so wait, does it mean it has like... Congenital deformities and turn into a vampire. Aside from living creatures, chorts can turn into whirlwinds that knock down fences, run the crop, ruin the crops. I mean, knocking down a fence and ruin your crops a bit different. I know. <laughs> yeah. Ruin the crops and tear the roofs of houses. To get rid of such a whirlwind, you need to throw a knife into it. Just people like there now, you chugging know, knives you into know, wind. How dangerous is that? What is it with Slavs and playing that knife game with your hands? Oh, five fingers? Yeah. Every single, um, any Eastern European I've ever came across love playing that game. Yeah. The, you know, where they do like that, uh-huh. you know, in between the hands. And the I used quicker. to play it, but that was after I played Red Dead Redemption and my mum was like, no, I can't have to hide like all the knives from me. I was like, hey, we'll see yes. <laughs> or what was the one? It was Alien, the first Alien movie. Oh, they yeah. The, yeah. If it's short in... If it's a chort in disguise, the whirlwind will bleed and quickly go away. For all their maliciousness, the chorts are very arrogant and never expect to be tricked themselves, which the heroes are eager to exploit. There are lots of fairy tales where the hero tricks the stupid chort into doing his job to the point where they have turned from genuinely malicious and spooky figures into bumbling and inc- incompetent buffoon in the modern perception. I think, so the thing is, let's be honest with you, most people are kind of sick of tieflings. Yeah. Let's be serious. I've been, I've, this is it's a it, 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 it's like you know. I'm going to assume that's probably where Tieflings have got some inspiration from yeah. from these little creatures. I think you know what the thing is. I think I might actually. But I don't think this isn't a Slavic thing in any way. I think there's things like this all. Yeah, there across. is. They're, they're like little malicious de- yeah. demons are pretty common everywhere all in Europe. Across Europe. Yeah. yeah, it's. I I wouldn't say this is specifically Slavic, but no. you know, I'm sure they all probably are related in some, some way, way, shape, or form. What I might do is, I really love like these types of weak creatures. What I might do is, I might make it as an actual class. You know the way it used to be like, um, an elf was you didn't play as an elf. An elf was 
what you played as and the class. Mm-hmm. I might do something like this and make one, like, you know, as a playable release. Oh, yeah. That is its own specific class as yeah. well. Because, I don't know, I think they're fun little creatures, and I, I have wanted to do something like this for a long time. Yeah. Right, you slimy, huey maggots. We has been working hard at Neckbeardia to get the bestest little people that monies can buy. We got all the boys here. We got the boys, the lizard boys, uh, vampire boys, all the boys over at Neckbeardia. Oh, we also got some pretty girls too. <laughs> <laughs> but I can't really make out which ones are boys and which ones are girls sometimes. <laughs> but oh, anyway, I need more money to get more darker, so get on over and order some now, you filthy pigs. Every video that we post, we're going to be giving away all of our homebrew content to one lucky winner. Every video. All you have to do to be in with a chance to win is to be subscribed, leave a comment, and like this video. And today's lucky winner is... This guy! Well done! Well done! To claim your prize, just send an email to neckbeardiacontact at gmail.com. Now let's get back to the video. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the Chort's amphibious cousin, the Anchutica, twice smaller than its better known relatives. It is a hybrid between a Chort and a duck. Even better, I actually like ducks. <laughs> like ducks. Anchutigas usually live in swamps, but can also be encountered on the banks of rivers and underneath the floorboards of saunas. Why? However, their natural habitat is not important, because they can instantly teleport to any person who said their name aloud. Oh, well. <laughs> They're just as malicious as chorts, but lack their shape-shifting and cunning, so their tricks are much more crude. If a person inadvertently summoned them, they would usually just gang up on them and beat them. <laughs> yeah, see, this is what gets me about these sort of weird creatures. Would you not just turn out actually just batter them? It's like that teal. It's like it's like that old question. It's like how many kindergartners do you think you could take on? I think it's like how many. It's like this. How many? See, see, see the thing is, see if I saw one of these, I would literally just grab the ash crate and smash it over its fucking face. No, I'd do the whole fucking. You know, like with the chicken, you grab it by its neck and then. Swing oh it. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's the Sabbath motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> or what? What's the? It's not Sabbath. What are the? What are the, the Jews? Whenever they transfer their sins into a chicken, I don't, know. I I don't can't. read on Jews. When encountered in a swamp, they would usually try to drag their victim into a quagmire. There's a thing called a quagmire. What's a quagmire? Yeah, a quagmire is like a dirty bog, like a like a felt like a dirty swamp. Like a quagmire would be like you know, like a stagnant, like you know, m- no moving word. Think is that of, why quagmire and family guy was called quagmire? I think so. Yeah, think of you know, like a dirty old flower vase. Oh yeah, you know, and the smell. smell that, of it? Yeah, that would, oh. that would I would you could call that a quagmire. There's a lesson here about not drinking before going into a swamp. <laughs> Hi, man. I have you. Oh, do you guys want to hear the story about us drinking in water? <laughs> like, we've, we've told, told, we've told the Let story. Me finish it up. Right, okay, okay. Finally, they like to sneak up on people in saunas and lull them to sleep with their wailing, resulting in heart attacks and death. Okay, so th- I think we've gone into these creatures before. So, me and Megan went away on holiday. This was, what, like September? 2019? T- September 2019. We go away on holiday and uh, we were at the pool in the hotel. It was a rooftop pool. It was really nice, so it was. We were the new ones there. Yeah, we were. Well, anyway, so we went up, and we. In the airport on the way there, there was a deal on for two. Two. One liter bottles. One liter bottles bottles of of absolute vodka. vodka. And it was like like 20 pounds. I was like, that'll do us. Yeah. That'll do us for a wee drink before we go out at night or whatever. Yeah, like, you know, we'll just keep it with us. Anyway, so the first day, we end up just deciding, like, we're not going to go mad. We're still a bit tired from all that. We'll just just have a wee drink. We'll have a wee drink. But the thing is, that okay. Well, the glasses in the hotel rooms were like, they were almost like shot glasses. So So we went down to the shop, down the road, and we bought. Jugs essentially. <laughs> Basically, it wasn't like it wasn't like a pint glass. It was like a bucket. Yeah, it was like a bucket cup. <laughs> anyway, so Megan ends up pour- like so we end up drinking. Um, and we're we, in the pool. We're in the pool. We're swimming in the pool, and we're Had sitting drink drinking. The side, having a couple of drinks, and we were fine in the I pool. I was fi- I was feeling great. So until I was until you. St- 
I got, got out of the pill. I got up out of the water and it all just hit me like an absolute ton of shit. Like, I mean, I, I was feeling completely fine. I was five or six drinks in and I, I didn't even feel drunk, if yeah. I'm honest with you. The second I got out of the pill, it was like I got hit in the head. Yeah. Like, and it just hit me. And I got up and I went for a cigarette and I went to go lean up against the wheel. You were talking one. to somebody and you went to go yeah, lean this, up. Yeah, so this woman, Donna, that we met, she's from Scotland. Uh, Donna thinks we're dickheads. Yeah. And um, we were getting on really well with her anyway. And then. I go to lean up against the wheel behind, behind me. Him. There was no wheel in. So I went flying down a flight of stairs, so I did. Um, I was in the pool, and, and like, all I, I seen was his feet going down the stairs at this stage. I uncontrollably started to laugh. Yeah. And like, I'm, I I hurt myself pretty bad. Like, I scraped my legs off. He's got a scarf from I've, it. Like, yeah, still got a, a scarf. a massive scarf at the back of his leg because he tried to hook his leg but to least, stop himself from falling. Well, like, I hurt my leg, so I didn't, like, <laughs> smash my head against the floor. You know what I mean? But my leg, like, ended up getting torn and going down the, these, like, tile stairs. <laughs> anyway, anyway, I was battered, so I was. And I was like, oh, my God. So your woman, Donna, starts freaking out. <laughs> and she's like, oh, my God, oh, my she God, how? She was trying to. She, she was trying to lift, get James up to take yeah, him over I, to the chair to set him down. I, I just felt like I had, had. I just got my head kicked in. <laughs> like I literally felt like I just got battered by someone. Like so I, I, at this stage, this other woman was attending to my husband. And Megan just. And Megan got I out of the pool. I was just in high stairs. Megan stage. was pointing and laughing at me, <laughs> and then and, and I got out of the pool. Go to down. My girl, I have to go see how he is, and there's blood everywhere yeah and i got out of the pool and i was laughing that hard i went to go walk down the stairs i fell broke my toe and then pissed yourself i pissed myself to fall the stairs <laughs> and then donna turns around and she grabbed her bag and she's like yeah, I, 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 guys, I, guys go. I gotta go i gotta go i gotta go and we i think we saw her she was staying in the same hotel as us and i think yeah. we saw her like once uh-huh after that um <laughs> yeah, we're probably not allowed to go on holiday. No. Um, so yeah, I've definitely this. That was our encounter with this. What do you say it? What was their name? Chuck. Um, I don't know. Let's um, just add like yeah. spit noises at the back, like all the poles do. Anyway, let's keep going. Uh, we've got another couple monsters to go here. Speaking of cuteness, meet the Aris pole, one of the cutest Slavic mythological creatures. It's usually depicted either as a lynx with a girl's head or a centuric creature. With the lower half of a lynx and the upper half of a lynx girl. So pretty much so the centaurs. Girls. Centaurs have a centaur cat girl. Yeah, that's basically. what it sounds like. Which I find cooler because it has boobs. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a natural creature, but rather the result of a curse that a wicked witch put on a young mother to get her husband to marry her own daughter instead. Turned into a monster, the Iris Pole is forced to run into the woods. Every night she sneaks back to your house drops down her lynx skin, turns back into a girl and breastfeeds her baby. If the father catches her doing that and burns her lynx skin, the curse is lifted and she turns back human forever. The witch and her daughter are either killed or driven away at this point, depending on whether you're reading the original version of the tale or the one adapted for the kids. Incidentally, regular lynxes also have mythological traits in Slavic folklore. Ancient Slavs didn't believe them to be regular animals, nor to have any meals. Instead, it was believed that a she-wolf who brings five litters of cubs turns into a lynx and becomes immortal, unless you kill it, of course. But lynxes are notoriously difficult to track down and ship, which has contributed to the mythical status. Lynxes were thought to be the patrons of little babies and guard them from malicious spirits. As you can see, there's a clear connection between the figure of lynx and motherhood. I like to draw a parallel between Slavic views on lynxes and the Native American view on jaguars, another species of big cats that was ascribed mythological properties. Well, <clears throat> what is it about cats? See, this is what gets me. Why do cats end up in more mythology than canines? Yeah. Is it because we've got a closer connection to wolves and dogs? Does that, does that make any sense? Then cats like cats like you know yeah they're domesticated but let's be serious if a domestic like if two domestic cats had babies and you just like dumped the baby it would probably get on just fine being a wild cat yeah <clears throat> you know what i mean whereas if you did that to a dog the dog would just the puppy would just die well not really you know what i mean street dogs and well like it depends on where about it depends well, you know yeah. i suppose if you're talking about india or south america yeah you could probably get away with it within reason but um uh, i don't know i always find, find it interesting and that's, I thought that was a very good one when it comes to animals that you don't see very often. 
You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And they kind of do become mystical in a weird way. Here's something that's undeniably cute, though in a completely different way. Some of you might have heard of the Leshy, the mighty forest guardian, but I don't think anyone here knows about its tiny cousin, the Akua. It's a child-sized creature with green hair, puffy cheeks, and a pot belly. Aussie! (laughs) But with no hoop just without the green hair. Yeah. (laughs) It never sleeps. (laughs) No, Aussie does sleep. Aussie does sleep. Instead, wandering around the woods, day in, day out, in search for travellers to trick. Instead of conflicting them personally, Akus use their voice to play cruel tricks. They can perfectly imitate the voice of any animal or human and use its ability to make people believe that there's a stranger nearby, lost in the woods and in need of their help. It leads them further and further away from the path until they've properly lost themselves. So I guess the lesson here is to never attempt to help anyone in the woods. (laughs) Sounds kind of dumb, but it might have been a solid advice back when brigands were a real danger. Yeah, probably. Probably. So this one reminds me of... So I've I've, I've been trying to work on mythology for my dog. So our dog is a corgi Jack Russell, and he's very adorable and very handsome. And I've always kind of thought of him as... he's, He's always been a bit of a bush dweller. Like, he loves going into bushes. And leaves. And leaves. And, like, see piles of leaves and all that type of stuff. He just lives for it. He like, loves it. He's, very, he's a very forest bush dweller. He's a foresty dog. You know what I mean? And I like to imagine... Like, you'd dump him in a forest and he'd be grand. Yeah, he would actually. I think he could come back in a week's time. Yeah, and he would, And he would actually be more than happy. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't think it would no. bother him in the slightest. Um, so one of the things I've kind of been working on, this is a project that kind of got abandoned a while back, and I kind of I want to get back to it, but honestly, I've got so much other other stuff going on. I think it's probably never going to get done at this rate. Yeah. Um, I kind of wanted to do one where Odie was like a uh, force guardian. Perhaps he lives and, under the sausage, and tree. he lives off the sausage tree. I'll see if I can find the artwork that I got done for this originally. And uh, there was going to be like an evil version of him, but it was going to be like cartoony with like an evil mustache. And, <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, and he I th- helped lost travelers. Yeah, in yeah, I, I like that. And again, you need to remember with corgis, corgis were uh, they're gifted to humans by the fairies that live in the forest. That's their like see that wee patch in the back. It's they're, supposed, two, they're two stripes along uh, the sh- color. Like, yeah, the shoulder they, they say that's where like the fairy the saddle. The fairy saddle was the, whenever they like were riding them in the battle yeah. or whatever. I don't know. I thought I thought it was very very sweet. Yeah. And, I, and you know what? This little creature reminds me of Ozzy. Just look at his wee. <laughs> it does remind me of Ozzy. <laughs> He's got the same not far off the same body shape anyway. <laughs> no, Ozzy's actually lost a lot of weeks. So he has. Yeah. Um, He's running about the show. Yeah, he's walking now, but that's what happens. Babies just get fatter and fatter until they start walking. Until they start And then once they start walking, it all just flies off them. Um, But yeah, look, this thread is so much bigger. This thread is absolutely gigantic, and it's a really good thread. So I really want, if you guys are interested, we'll do, uh, we'll continue on with this thread. I think it's really interesting. I like all this sort of stuff. I really, there's something about mythological creatures that just does it for me. Yeah. And I can't explain why. And I feel like Slavic. Uh, stuff is really overlooked a lot of the time. Everyone's so busy looking at Norse or Native American. Or Celt. Yeah, you know, and I feel like Slavs are kind of overlooked a lot of the time. And I think their stuff's actually really interesting. And also the other thing is, a lot of their stuff was actually preserved very well. Very well. You know, yeah. the problem is you've got, like, see, Irish stuff, it's... It's a lot of it was just not preserved no, very well. And everybody in Ireland's a bunch of fucking liars. <laughs> yeah, and everyone's got they're like, no, this is how it happened. No, this is how it happened. It's like, a, well, what's the story? There's so many Invalid variations point. of the same creatures. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, but yeah, look, let us know what you thought of this one. Uh, check out the website. We've got tons of models. Uh, we've got tons of subclasses. We've got tons of absolutely Every, yeah. everything. Go have and a look. we always post new stuff. So like, you know. See what are you, you actually like? doing? Go check it out. Like, honestly, the thing is, I bet you any money, since the last time you've been on, it's probably been different. So, yeah. uh, you like, you never know. Have a wee Go check it out and have a look and hit subscribe and hit the notification bell so you get notified every time we post a video. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye!